Hello everybody, today we're going to tackle one of my most requested topics, just a short video with some tips on how to make the B flat chord easier. And really that's a video that's really not just about the B flat chord, but bar chords in general and a little about body mechanics. So this B flat chord, uh, it tends to be kind of a plateau area for most uh, beginner slash intermediate ukulele players. It's one of those skills that until you can tackle playing bar chords easily, it's really hard to rise to the next level. And folks get stuck here a lot. And the B flat chord happens to be the one that they think is the hardest because it's usually the first uh, bar chord that they've encountered because ukuleles do like to play in the key of F a lot and the B flat chord shows up there. So uh, to begin with, there's a couple different fingerings that folks do. They either bar all the way across the first fret and then do these two fingers or they just bar the first two strings here and then do these two fingers. So let me show up close. Here's, I call this a partial bar. This is a full bar. And it doesn't matter which one you do at the moment, they both um, need the same technique to get properly done. So it doesn't really matter at the moment. So, uh, bar chords. So what you're trying to do actually is touch more than one string with this finger, whether it's the partial bar or the whole bar. Now, the big mistake that a lot of folks do is they just think that they just have to squeeze harder to get it right. Well, that's not true. To begin with, it's not about squeezing harder, it's about squeezing smart enough. So the, a string doesn't have to be pressed all the way down to the wooden fretboard to make a note. It only has to be pressed until the string contacts the metal fret. That's it. So if you are uh, fretting the string as close to behind the fret as possible, not in the middle of the fret, but as close to the fret as possible, it makes it far easier to press. And that goes for bar chords too. If you're trying to bar in the middle of this fret compared to right up behind that fret, it's a very big difference about how much pressure it actually takes. So that's my first tip. Get as close to the fret as possible without going over. Secondly, um, when I make bar chords, I don't just squeeze my hands this way. I take my wrist and I rotate my hand. I give a little twist. This twisting motion, with the thumb going this way and the finger going this way, means that I'm using my whole hand and forearm and wrist to make the bar, not just squeezing with my fingers, which is far weaker. And when I do that twist, what ends up happening is the back part of my left hand finger here, this first finger, that's what actually makes the bar on the string. If you touch your finger here, it's closer to the bone than this fleshy part is right here. So that's on purpose. I like this part because it's, it's a harder surface for making the bar. So let me show you what I mean. Instead of just squeezing and doing the flat part of my finger, I'm taking my hand and giving a little twist so that I can fret on the back of the part of my finger. So you see my thumb is a little farther this way and, and I'm exaggerating to try to show you I get a little twist. Then if I make the whole chord it looks like this. So to me with my thumb over here to this side and my finger this way, twisting and then fretting on this bony part, it's far easier to play that chord. Even on the partial bar, I still have a little twist. So that's how I make all my bar chords. They all have that twist in them. Now for you, um, you may have, the side of your finger may have lots of ridges in it and different shapes, especially if you've got some arthritis. So you may need to experiment with moving your finger up and down for the bar this way until you have one that fits your hand properly and you can mute all the strings. You can even practice just making a bar at any fret, doing a little twist, and then playing all four strings and seeing if they speak. If you have it, this is the most common thing. Or, if we're doing this one. Because people tend to get that second string caught in a little valley on your finger and then it doesn't work. You gotta move up and down until you find your spot. Next, when you make this bar chord, these other fingers need to be really well curved so that they curve up and over the string. Otherwise, they are going to accidentally mute the other strings. It's like these two fingers are little tunnels and the first two strings are trains that have to fit through them. If, you, if your hand kind of flattens out like this, it's going to mute those other strings and this shape is never going to work. So, it's very common for the middle finger underneath the pad of your finger to accidentally be touching the second string. I see that all the time. So, to counteract that, you have to make sure these other fingers are very well curved and they're just using the tips of the fingers to, make, to fret the string. So, I know that it's difficult that the first finger is completely flat 
and the second two um, fingers are carefully curved, but that's just what it takes to make this happen. Great. Um, another thing uh, that I tell people a lot, which you don't really like to hear, is that most of your factory-made instruments have a string height at this part of the ukulele, the nut, that's way too high, and it needs to be lowered. It's so high that it is almost impossible to play that B-flat chord. Now, if you go get it worked on by a luthier, uh, or you have an instrument that does have good string height, that's not going to magically make you be able to play the B-flat chord. You're still going to have to learn how to do this right. But you may have really high um, strings right here, which makes it difficult. If you think about it as well, even on an instrument that's carefully set up, uh, out here in the middle of the instrument, when you go to make a bar chord, there's like a lot more slack. It's easier to press all those strings down. But right up here next to the nut, it feels a lot harder because you're right up against the nut right here. So, to review, uh, I take my left hand and when I do my bars, I give this little twist this way, which allows the bony side of my finger to twist back and be the one fretting the strings. I make sure that that part of the finger is as close to the fret as possible, not in the middle of the fret area, but all the way up here. I give that little twist, and then I need to make sure that these two fingers are curved so that they're not accidentally muting the other strings. And the bad news is, even if, if you've got all that understood, your hand still needs to be trained how to do it. You have to sit and practice it and get it till it's an easy and natural. Don't let your hand cramp up, so stop and stretch and whatever every, every few minutes. It should be a pretty natural feeling. It shouldn't be like a death grip. If you are pressing carefully and smartly, it will be easier than if you're just squeezing hard. So I hope this is helpful, and uh, send me an email if you need anything. Thanks.